in space, no one can hear you scream. But once you find out the details of Alien on stage, uh, you might want to scream. <laughs> Welcome to the Film Start Podcast. I am Chris Gore. I'm excited to talk to you today about a film that is premiering at the South by Southwest Film Festival. South by Southwest this year is all online, obviously to be socially distant. We're all we're all so used to the to being socially distant these days. But um, South by Southwest um, is premiering this documentary about a, a, a stage play that I had heard about. Um, some amateur uh, thespians put together a full stage play of the original 1979 Ridley Scott movie, Alien. And the the specifics of this thing are gonna blow your mind. I, I, I can't wait to talk to the filmmakers who are all the way in England right now. They're, they're, they're gonna chat with us about it in just a second. Um, before we do that, I wanna tell you about our annual event, Award This Film Threat likes to celebrate the, the indie movies that don't get any love during award season. These are movies that don't get recognition from the Oscars. They don't even get recognition from the, the Spear Awards. These are smaller indie movies that come out on video on demand and limited theatrical release. And they're all movies that you need to know about. And from the 2000 films that Film Threat reviewed in 2020, we, we came up with this list of less than 100 films that we really feel you should know about. Here are little details about the event. In a world where every award show is a fucking Zoom call, comes Award This. From your pals at Film Threat comes a celebration of true independent films. Join us on April 10th at a socially distanced drive-in. In fact, I'll be there as your announcer, wearing a hazmat suit and inside a giant Bacta tank. And prepare for a virtual award show unlike any other ever in the history of mankind. Or award Awards kind. Award this 2021. It's happening, whether you like it or not. Drive in live event on Saturday, April 10th. Virtual award show on Sunday, April 18th. Get tickets now at awardthis.com. Uh, so I hope you choose to attend. We still have some drive in tickets available. Um, our, our virtual event tickets are free. So register that, uh, register for it now. And we'll be chatting online together on Sunday, April 18th. And, uh, I don't know if you can hear this, but the leaf blowers are here. It's like whenever there's a podcast, it's, they, they all know that leaf blowers just magically arrive as you're, as you're doing a podcast, but let's talk to the co-directors of alien on stage premiering at South by Southwest, Danielle Coomer and Lucy Harvey are here. Uh, from England. Thank you so much for talking to me on the Film Threat Podcast. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks. We're very happy to be here. Well, tell me about how you discovered this stage play. I had heard rumblings about this online. Um, and what I think a lot of people don't know, and I didn't know until I watched your amazing documentary, is that this isn't just a stage play that was put on. It was put on by bus drivers. These are not professional thespians, professional stage actors, they're bus drivers? How, how did this come? First of all, how did that come together that they decided, hey, they're going to put on an amateur production of something that is incredibly challenging? Yeah. And then how did you how did you find out about it and then convince them, hey, we just want to show all the mistakes that you're making behind the scenes or all the embarrassing moments um, and have that all play out? <laughs> That's a long answer you're going to get right now. <laughs> God, I want to hear it. <laughs> uh, so um, their backstory is most of them work at the Wilson Dorset Bus Company. And you've got night managers, like night shift workers who are duty managers, uh, managers who sort out the shift in the day, people who've been driving the buses for 30 years, Um the director's son became a bus driver. The director's girlfriend used to drive buses. And um, in that community, they did one year of doing a traditional pantomime, which is something that's very popular in the UK. And uh, every town has one and they do it every year. And it's something that kind of harks back to maybe Shakespearean times where there's a lot of cross-dressing in the theater. 
and maybe old Victorian music hall style sing along. But we have this tradition called pantomime, which is always around Christmas time, always based on a fairy tale like Robin Hood, which is what they did the year before, and has cross dressing and silly songs, and it's all a bit of fun. So that's the one production that they did together. And then they decided they loved it. Let's do something else. And they asked the, the son of the stepson of the director, who's the shift manager at the bus station, and his mum, uh, they asked their son if they, he could write a script for them because he likes writing scripts. That's his hobby. And he's obsessed with sci-fi and films. And he said, I don't like pantomime. <laughs> so I won't write a pantomime script. Um, I'm going to think of writing a movie. What do you think about that? So they asked the rest of the bus drivers, should we, put, should we adapt a movie instead? And they're like, okay. So he presented a few films to adapt from, a list of 10 that included um, Tombstone, Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill was in the list of them to adapt. <laughs> and uh, then they all decided on Alien because um, Luke, who's the scriptwriter, the son, it was his favorite film growing up with his mum who plays Ripley. Uh, that's their go-to film that they absolutely adore. And uh, that's why they ended up doing Alien. And they all agreed to do it. Well, it's amazing to see how they distilled the, the because um, the about the second half of your doc, you get to see at least the highlights of moments from the play. And it's so incredibly creative. I would say almost even childlike the way that some of the effects were achieved are just like really simple. I mean, they built a full alien costume. You see not only the behind the scenes of the actors, you know, rehearsing and the one thing that kept coming up was you you forget your lines. Like they could never remember their lines, um, which I thought was so funny. And that's always a thing that's mystified me um, whenever I speak to actors, just the ability to be able to memorize so many lines of dialogue. To, so just to take like amateurs and just say, okay, now memorize this entire you know, and amateurs that also have like three jobs. So, like the guy who had to remember the most lines, he was training to be a lawyer and working, you know, doing his own little business and not just having a regular job, but having a lot of work. And yeah, I mean, it's hard enough to do the play, but not only that, they had to just do their day jobs, which I thought was, which I yeah. thought was in incredible. So that's, that's why it took them a year to prepare what they were doing. And none mm. of them had done that before. So, they assigned each other roles that they were sort of suited to. So, Luke, the script writer, he, that's what he loves. He loves writing scripts. So he adapted the script and he and his girlfriend agonized over the costume. So they came, came at it with an, an element of professionalism. So there's this amazing mix of really kind of like well done details with this very amateur mix of this ramshackle group of people across generations with all different abilities. But they spent a year all working on their roles and getting it the best they could get it within their ability and then bringing it together in this really strange combination of, you know, a little bit half assed or incredibly well done or somehow genius, you know, very homemade, but kind of genius. And it just ended up working really, really well. How did you convince them to say, okay, we're going to show you not, at, not only at your best, but also at your worst. One of the things that struck me I thought was so funny is that every time you, you see them get gather for a rehearsal, that it became more about, you know, let's have some tea. There's, there's snacks over on this table. All yeah. the like being caught up in the distractions of like the first part of getting together for rehearsal is just catching up on what's going on in their lives. Yeah. Like, like it was just like, wait, are they actually going to rehearse? Like. Well, for them, the main part about it was to do it for enjoyment and for fun. Like they weren't doing it as a serious show. They were doing it to hang out with their friends and have a good time. And that really comes across. You get that. But then it got to the point where there was a crux of like, oh, hang on a minute. They are doing this as a show. So there was a little, there's a slight, you know, tension there. But the main part for them was just the joy of the hanging out with your mates, you know, doing a bit of theater, but then also just having a nice time and having, you know, having fun. That was a, a and big And that's the beauty of why it seems to work so well anyway because they weren't taking it that seriously there was a point where it was like we have to take it seriously because it has to function and it has to we have to do well but you know none of them are professional and it's their weekend and they work full time they just want to you know enjoy it and not and not be too stressed about it um 
I think Dave was the one that carried the most stress in the end because he, you know, he was directing the whole thing and everything else that goes with it. Um, so I think out of all of the members, he was the one that ended up, it was a very serious thing for him to achieve, but he still took it in his stride with a, a lot of kind of humour and grace. And um, yeah, they, it, that I think that's why it came across so well on stage because they came at it from that perspective. They weren't agonising over it or worried about what people are going to think or, you know, making sure it was absolutely perfect. They just did the best they could do and they thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. And, and that's why it was so fun to watch. Was it the fact that they really seemed to, I mean, I think in the end they really took doing the play seriously, but I, everyone, no one took themselves seriously. They were, you could tell they really enjoyed each other's company and had a good time. Did that contribute to giving you such you know, unfettered access, both, you know, you know, uh, for the play and then also but the behind the scenes, all the behind the scenes aspect, including the construction of the sets and and um, the special effects, which I love the documentation of all the special effects. But but it seems like them giving you access is like, you know, sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Very um, unselfconscious and very easy to film, weren't they, Danielle? Yeah, they were they were brilliant, and they you know some people you put a camera in front of them and they immediately completely change or they freeze up or they're you know they don't get the warmth, you don't get the energy from them. But these guys, you know, what you see on camera is just who they are, and they were just able to be relaxed and to just they were just really great for us to spend time with and to film. There was never any real issues with like oh you can't show this, you can't show that. I mean that's what was the beauty of it as well is the fact they were so open with the whole process and they weren't oh God, you can't show us not learning the lines and oh no, you know, they kind of embraced it all. And you see them backstage before they go on stage, you know, there's a few of them chatting and, you know, Jason's just like, we're bus drivers, you know, what are you gonna, you know, and he just, they just really just didn't have the pressure on themselves, which meant that there wasn't, you know, it meant that everyone could just embrace what happened and the way it was, but they were, yeah, they were wonderful to work with and to film and they, yeah, they were just so open with everything. I mean, they even, you know, they invited us to their home. We went and hung out with them and we'd hang out with them, and, you know, go to the pub and just hang out, just have a lovely time. And they were just really, really great. It was a lovely yeah, time. Really accommodating and really lovely group of people that, yeah, made life very easy for us. Well, um, there was a lot of going to the pub. I thought I, I really, uh, <laughs> I thought that part was great. But, but also uh, what I found interesting is, the play is put on and it's put on for maybe 25 people. And then there's a point at which they're invited to and 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 um, fill in the details because I'm uh, there's a theater they're invited to that it actually becomes real. What is the theater again? It's the um, it's the Leicester Square Theater, which is right on the heart of Leicester Square, which is where all the big Hollywood premieres or the big cinemas are there. So it's just off the side of Leicester Square is a, a special theater there. In the heart of London's what we call the West End Theatre Land, so all the big yeah. famous theatres are there. This one, it's it's a really lovely small independent West End theatre. So it's interesting. Like, they're, they're invited to perform at this theatre, and it sells out, and the pressure is on. And you show, you show all aspects of that night, including you know highlights of a lot of the play. You see all the behind the scenes, the, the sort of the pressure on everyone. What I found so incredible was the reaction from the audience. They yeah. loved, every, I mean, like they were so into it. I mean, it got a standing ovation. It was, it was crazy. It was just crazy yeah. to see that like aspects of, the aspects that were pulled off great, I mean, the audience loved. And if something didn't come off well, the audience loved it. Like. <laughs> It's like they were with, can you describe the energy in the room when, when you, because it must have been frantic for you just as documentarians to capture yeah. all aspects. Not only, it was amazing how you did it because you not only had behind the scenes, you're filming the stage, you're in the audience and you had like a GoPro or, or something yeah. inside of the the guy dressed as the alien. the alien. Yeah, on his chest, yeah. <laughs> what, I mean, you really feel like you're there. So what yeah. was it like to, to get, I mean, half the movie is kind of filmed in one night in a way. So. Uh. It, was a lot of, it was a lot of running around and like trying to figure stuff out. And also, you know, they're, they're getting the show ready and it's like, they didn't have time to run through. They didn't have time to rehearse. They didn't have time, you know, the radio mics weren't quite working. I just remember feeling like so nervous for them. Like, oh dear God, like the more it got the audience come in, you can hear the murmuring and you know, we're shooting the film, but I'm also thinking, 
holy shit, they've got to get on stage and do this. And at this point, you know, we don't know if they know the lines. We don't know if they're gonna... It was what, really you know, like, honestly. oh my God, what have you done? But... I think there was the energy in the room was just, it was yeah. incredible. Yeah, sorry, Lucy. There was just on. a magical faith that everybody was there to support them because it didn't matter what happened on stage. It was just going to be brilliant anyway. And that's the magic of it. And it, it was completely sold out. And the way we sort of presented it to people was that if this is a heroic attempt by a group of people to do something spectacular and you're going to love it. And it's just so incredibly entertaining everything they do is entertaining they're naturally funny people and the fact they never intended it to be funny just makes it even better um and yeah the energy was intense and you did really feel quite sick for them at that at that moment but also incredibly excited and as soon as the curtains opened you realized they couldn't put a foot wrong because the audience were just you know 100 percent behind them from the they were just the yeah moment. with them the whole way i think they just yeah, they just wanted it to succeed and they wanted that just the energy of the audience was with them and it was and I think they realized that and you see them relax as well on stage you kind of feel like oh wow this is going to be fun like they can yeah and it was just a beautiful thing to be a part of and to see and everybody there was just yeah cheering them on yeah, yeah. it was it was a magical never to be repeated set of circumstances that were just really just fell into place as if there was some other magic were happening to keep everything going along and everything to just work really well and be incredibly successful and all the luck that we had along the way capturing all the moments and you know the gopro thing it's just a fluke you know little, it's just like following our instincts and hoping for the best with the best of intentions and we ended up with an incredible result which we we're just so pleased with yeah that gopro footage in the alien pov just really Really, I mean, like I that puts you exactly in, you know, the perspective of the performers, which I thought was a brilliant choice on your part to include that. It really just it puts you right in there. You know, you're you're cheering for them and hoping for the best. And uh I I, I thought the audience reaction was spot on. I thought I thought it was so yeah. great. Um was what's amazing so is like that this blew up into a phenomenon online, like people seeing it and then posting about it on social media. And now it's come to, this is something that I don't know how many times it's been per performed, uh, but but it's be become a recurring show. At first they did um, two more shows at the Leicester Square Theatre and I think a couple of um, abridged versions in London. Um, I don't know. I think it, it could it, it can't be sustainable for them because they've all got full time jobs mm -hmm. and it's it's something that I think is a moment in time that it was an incredible opportunity for them but unless they gave up their jobs and had proper backing or funding it's impossible for them to sustain it as a as a thing that they continually do um, and I think that the fact that they managed to do another three shows for the following years was a uh, incredible an incredible achievement for them. Um, but yeah, I think the documentary uh, is going to be sort of like a living testament to their achievement and people can continue to enjoy it after, you know, they may never mm -hmm. see the live stage show again and maybe one day, but we'd need money to pay for them to do it. And, you know, otherwise it would just be exhausting for them. Well, yeah. I'm so happy that you preserved their hard work in the form of this documentary. Have there been reactions from people, you know, like Sigourney Weaver or Ridley Scott? Have you heard anything or? <laughs> we're, like no two, we're like two contacts away from Ridley Scott and Sigourney Weaver. We've, they keep we've, sort of coming up. We've had a couple of offers for people to send it to, the, to them. So Sigourney, Ridley. Check it out. We You're gonna know. love. We don't know if we, we don't know if Ridley Scott's seen it. We Sigourney Weaver may have seen it because we we just keep getting these sort of um, contacts going. I know someone who knows someone, and they're going to show it to them. And we're like, okay, we'll we'll see oh, what cool. happens. <laughs> so that's going to happen, okay? Because um, I know another uh, filmmaker, Alexander Philippe, who did the um, documentary about Alien, and um, mm. you know, it was shown to Ridley Scott, and that helped him get distribution. Oh. So, um, I don't know if you, I don't know, I could give you that contact if that helps. <laughs> email, email me after, I'll give you, I'll dial you into Alexander. You should s send him your film and, and maybe there's a connection there. Alexander makes um, these very thoughtful um, 
uh, documentaries, dissertations, almost like these, uh, it's like taking a master class in a film and he did one about Alien called Memory, Origins of Alien, uh, which would be a great double feature with with your documentary as well. So, yeah, that would be cool. after this. I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. Okay. Um, sure. Thank you, Alexander. But I'm curious too. The, the great thing about theater is, and I am a I am a fan of theater. I've had in the past uh, um, season passes to the Pantages here in Los Angeles, uh, mm -hmm. at where I'm fortunate enough to see some of the the big plays. Um, it's such an intimate thing, theater, because anything can happen, right? Your mistakes are just a mistake happens. It just happens, you know. Yeah. The audience. From the audience is with you, you know, in 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 lieu of mistakes, which I think is, you know, why this came off so well. But now we're in a time where, and I live walking distance to three movie theaters, and I haven't been to a movie theater in a year, um, which is frustrating. Yeah. For you, the South by Southwest is one of the most fun film festivals. I know. Don't tell us. We, I'm so heartbreaking. We can't be there in real life. Hopefully, awesome. maybe we'll go back next year. <laughs> Austin is such a great town. Um, so your movie's premiering there, but now, you know, I would say by the end of this year, you know, movie theaters are starting to open up. In Los Angeles, movie theaters are going to be able to open at 50%. So I think that'll happen before the end of this month. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know where things are at. It, you know, it's different all over the world. It's different. It's different from county to county. Mm -hmm. But do you foresee being able to because i really feel this documentary is a crowd pleaser it's something yeah, that, that was the, that's, yeah it's, that's what we were hoping we want to sit in a, yeah, we I think that's the same experience as we did in yeah. the theater we want to have the same experience in the cinema and it's yeah especially with all the pandemic and not be not have audiences not being able to connect and go and see shows i had people because when we screened we had a screening in um london at fright fest which was an online festival a few months ago and people were messaging me saying how much they connected with it because it showed audiences having a great time and it reminded you of theatre and it reminded you of shared experience and how important that is and how valuable that is and how much we love it as humans just being in the yeah. same room with people sharing something and it's just flipping great so I'm desperate to be in a cinema and watch people watch this film because I know it's going to be a hoot yeah. so um, yeah can't wait to do that. Well um I'm hoping that you have a long festival run before you get distribution, which I think is um, an inevitability. You'll get distribution for this documentary. It's, um, you know, um, in terms of its like pop culture significance, it's, it's I consider it to be very important. So um, I know it's gonna get distribution, but I think if you have a long festival run by the end of this year, you probably will get to see it at a festival. I'm guessing by the fall that, that that that'll be a possibility. So South by Southwest kicks it off, but you're, I assume you're going to be playing other festivals. Yeah. We've got a few others coming up in the coming months and a couple sort of towards the end of the summer. So that would be really great if around then things open up again, it would be wonderful. Actually, go and be next to people. Yeah. I mean, Lucy and I haven't even watched the final film together, have we? No. We're in separate oh, cities. No. <laughs> so oh. we've done the whole last part of the edit. It's been completely remote from yeah. Ukraine to Barcelona to Canada. Like we've just been, you know, it's it's crazy times. Wow. Yeah, well, I do miss again. that because the, it's a very real feeling when you're in a, a room with contagious positive energy. It's a physical effect. You can't you can't recreate mm. it remotely. Yeah. yeah, well, look, um, what, where can people get more information about Alien on stage if they're not, if they're not signed up for South By? So our Twitter, Instagram, is alien on stage doc and then the website is alien on stage doc.com and you can sign up to our uh, subscribers list through the website we have a facebook stage which is alien on stage i think that's it isn't it alien on stage or it might be alien on stage doc um but yeah alien. socials and our website and you can email us through the website uh, right. and you'll find out things there awesome well uh lucy and danielle thank you so much Thank you. Uh, no, you were gonna say, I'm sorry. I, I, I was going to ask you a question. I was going to ask you, did you have any issues hit, um, following the regional accents? Uh, oh, uh, no. But see, I grew up uh, watching Monty Python. So um, <laughs> having grown up watching Monty Python, um, the accents didn't, it, it didn't occur to me. Okay. Um, so yeah, has that been, has that been an issue? No, um, we just wondered if it, it might be. 
<laughs> no, not for me. Not for me. Like I say, I grew up on Monty Python and watching a, a lot of a lot of British television. So right. uh, I actually, I, it made it more enjoyable for me, frankly. That's so, fantastic. And well, if think, you could choose a favorite, if uh, not that you should ever choose favorites, but off the top of your head, what was your favorite moment from one of the cast members in the in the documentary? Oh, I think. Well, I think it was the chest burster scene because <gasps> uh, I don't want to ruin anything about it, but it's just like the lead up to that because it is one of the, I mean, it's such an iconic scene. Um, Alexander Philippe's documentary Memory is all about that scene and how significant it is in cinema. And the recreation of that I thought was amazing. But just the fact that like the homemade aspect of it is the thing that I love the most of like, you know, this is what we got. And and the guy did the special effects like, well, you know, I researched online and I think this is, I think I can make this work. And I just <laughs> love it. That's why I mentioned it's like kind of like childlike, like yeah. it's like oh, amateur and this is the best we can do with the resources yeah. we have. And it was amazing. Like yeah. even like the, 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 the um, encasing, the kind of like, um, where, where the, they're getting out of that, the sleep chamber. The choir and, chamber. And, and you see the guy off stage kind of just like opening, he just sort of opens it, you know? Like, it's like, but you can't see him, but it, oh, look at it magically just opens. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's just a guy pulling a thing. <laughs> High tech theater magic, a man lying down. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because when you are innocently playing because you just want to emerge yourself in the fun of playing, you don't consider all these details, you just do it. And that's, oh. that's the beauty of it that I really enjoy watching. Again and again, I'm not even remotely bored of, of our film at all. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, uh, Lucy and Danielle, thank you for talking to us on the Film Threat Podcast. And congratulations on South Bay Southwest and your uh, coming festival tour. And I hope um, at the end of your tour, you get to see it in a theater with an audience because I know they'll love it. Oh, yeah, thank you so much amazing. for having us. It's been great chatting thank to you, Chris. So thank much. you. Yeah. <laughs>